Keeper. Oh, I see you've decided to come down to the Friday Night Terrors Buffet. Just leave one of those sandwiches. I promise to save it for someone. This is that ice cold Michelle fight for that white gold. This one for them hood girls. Them this is what I want to party. Now let's not be greedy. I'll surround the sandwiches. Yum. Stop eating it all. <laughs> Hmm. It's disco time. Well, they really tore it up in there. Tore up some flesh, that is. <laughs> now sit back and relax for this horrifying tale that I call the Doom of Esme. We'll be continuing our Forgotten Age campaign using Carolyn Fern's solo on standard difficulty. Did very well last scenario, earning 7 experience points and no trauma from her efforts in the Untamed Wilds. So we went ahead and upgraded, we traded a Guts for a physical training, one copy of Dr. Marlon Christopher for Ancient Stone, a copy of um, Dynamite Blast for Well Prepared, which will uh, definitely come in handy in my opinion uh, when we have a lot of assets in play with, with multiple... Um, matching symbols and we added another copy of level one ancient stone uh, and traded in a holy rosary for it the reason for this my plan is to upgrade these ancient stones as quickly as possible this scenario is extremely punishing i have never been able to complete it with carolyn fern and i plan on being defeated this time around oh yeah i did uh, trade in a quantum flux for a forewarn to help with the treacheries in the scenario um this scenario seems to be designed to just destroy you. And uh, it's it's one of the few scenarios that I've only been able to beat a couple of times after dozens of playthroughs. So we'll see how it goes this time around. So again, my goal here is not to actually complete the scenario, but to earn at least three or four experience points and get identify the stones so that I can upgrade them next scenario. So we went ahead and used the seven experience points we have none left over. That's it. Friday, July 3rd, 1925. We spent most of yesterday moving our camp to the edge of the ruins. With the serpentine creatures still guarding the region, we have decided that a small party will have the best chance of slipping into the main temple unnoticed. I told Maria, the expedition's naturalist, to take one of the trucks and wait beyond the northern edge of the rainforest. Our cartographer, Jose, is guarding the camp until we return. We're on our own, mm -hmm. but at least we've cleared an escape route in the event things go sour. Despite Ichitaka's warnings, you've entered the ruins of the temple in search of ancient knowledge and artifacts. After your hellish journey through the jungle, the quiet solitude of the temple ruins sows paranoia in your mind. Serpent eyes glare at you from the darkness. Every drop of water and fallen pebble causes you to roll about in search of danger. But the real danger is yet to come. Alright, welcome to the Doom of Esli on Standard Difficulty. This is probably the most difficult scenario that I've played um, in terms of the investigators that I like to use. Uh, so I've played this over a dozen times and only beat it, I think, once or twice. With Carolyn, I've never won this scenario, so I don't expect to win this time. Um, things tend to spiral out of control in this one very quickly. It's like uh, Avalanche. <laughs> Basically, there are... Um, treacheries that will hold you in, in one place so you can't move and then um Mount Christopher right off the bat nice um oh shriveling perfect so I got my combat preparedness and my investigation preparedness definitely don't need this early on so we'll get rid of that another shriveling look at that our backup combat preparedness we're definitely going to need it um, there are treacheries here that will take away your assets, and then you get bombarded with enemies. You get sworn pretty quickly. And there is one monster of an enemy that comes out halfway through the scenario, and if you don't have a way to deal with it, 
it's uh, it's going to end your run very, very quickly. So we need to be prepared. And um, we'll go ahead and shuffle the encounter deck here. Okay. Yeah, this, um, this scenario, I mean, things spiral out of control. You, you think you have a grasp on it, and then all of a sudden one treachery hits you, and you're stuck trying to deal with it for a couple of rounds. And after that, it just goes all downhill. We've got our opening hands, everything's been shuffled, and let's go ahead and reveal our starting location, which is the entryway. The sun sets over the temple ruins, bathing the stone in warm light. The sounds of the rainforest are distant by the time you cross underneath the painted entryway. Inside, the halls are plunged into darkness. Many hundreds of years ago, this temple might have been a bastion of beauty and reverence in this perilous jungle. Two shroud, one clue. You can resign right from here and escape. Uh, and if you have torches, you can check the exploration deck, the top two cards, kind of like having a map in the um, Untamed Wilds. We do not have torches, so we're going to have to live without that. Let's see how well we do. When I've played it uh, and have tried using torches, it really has not benefited me very much. So, unfortunately, even though the treacheries are pretty bad here, you do end up getting them eventually. It's just, you know, get them early or get them late, doesn't matter. First thing we're going to do is bring out Mylon Christopher. Uh, he's going to help us investigate and get us resources. I could have opted for playing my web, my uh, spells first. But having him in play will accelerate my resource generation, which means I can play my spells much more quickly. If I had gone the other way, I wouldn't have been able to get him out for a few rounds. So We'll go ahead and investigate our starting location and try to pick up this clue right here. And 5 versus 2. If we pick up the clue, then we will gain a resource because of my own Christopher. And uh, we get plus one. Look at that. We get the clue, which means we also get a resource because of my own Christopher. Really cool. One away from being able to play the spell. So we'll have one out next round. And uh, let's go ahead and explore. Um, yeah, we have nothing else to play, so let's get that. And it is a treachery. A tear in time. Test three willpower. For each point you fail by, you have to lose one action or take one horror. Ouch. With a willpower of three, I'm not too confident with that. We'll go ahead and commit an unexpected courage so that we don't lose any actions. The unexpected courage will boost us up to a five. Um, actually... I think I'll save the Unexpected Courage for another test, because one or two horror, or three, not a big deal. We're going to go, uh, it's going to be three versus three. And the Chaos Bag says we get minus three. Jeez, man. All right, so we take three horror, or up to three horror, or up to three actions lost, or a combination of those. I think... Um, Three horror is not terrible for Carolyn, especially this early. So we'll go ahead and take those. Uh, we can always heal those by getting a lucky pull of the Elder Sign or something of the sort. Not terrible. Okay. So that ends our turn and we'll draw our card and gain our resource. Okay, Word of Protection. Always handy, especially against Entombed. My main goal for this card is to use it on that because Entomb can just devastate for the a lot of the investigators that I use Entombed is a horrendous treachery that just takes turn upon turn to get rid of it is so bad one of my most hated treacheries in this game is Entombed alright so we pull our first treachery of the game Obscuring Fog that's not bad at all um, attached to a location, and it gets plus two shroud. Not bad at all. We've already gotten our clue out of it, so <laughs> basically it's a non-issue. Even better news is that it's not an enemy, so we don't have to worry about how we're going to deal with it. We can now pay for our spell and put it into play and be able to defend ourselves in the case 
that we do get an enemy or a creature. So we'll play Shriveling, and it has four charges, and we can fight with our willpower, and it deals plus one damage. If we pull a special symbol, we take a horror, which again, for Carolyn, is not that big a deal. And um, sorry guys if I'm losing my uh, <laughs> my breath and all that very quickly. It's I'm just coming off of a cold, and I'm sure you can hear I'm kind of stuffy. So that's... Um, on here and this one is connected there we go cool successful exploration grand chamber two shroud one clue when you investigate grand chamber if you do not succeed by at least two before resolving any other facts flip one of the clues to its doom side and it is a victory location this one can get very annoying because you have to succeed by two not always necessarily possible. <laughs> so we'll put a clue here. And because we were successful in the investigation or in the exploration, we get to move there at no additional action cost. So we'll go ahead and try and investigate it right away. We have a five because of Dr. Marlon Christopher. So five versus two. We have to succeed by at least two. And that's a minus two. That is not a success by two or more. So this gets to flip. Uh, yep. Gets to flip to a doom. And uh, that is unfortunate. Because the doom can add up here. And when uh, the agenda flips, the doom on locations in this scenario does not go away. Which is annoying. So we draw a Premonition, one of my favorite new cards from this cycle. I really, really like this card quite a bit, especially in multiplayer. It's immensely helpful. All right, we'll add a Doom to the agenda and draw our next encounter card. So we are well equipped to deal with enemies and um, treacheries, so we are in a good position right now. So let's see what we get. And it's an enemy, the Fang of Yig. It's praised poison investigator. We are not poisoned. It retaliates. When it's engaged with a poison investigator, that investigator cannot play cards or commit cards to skill tests. This guy can be really difficult if you are poisoned. The retaliate and the three health are annoying. He's not going to kill you outright, but he can actually be a bit of trouble, especially for Carolyn because her fight value, her combat scores are not very high. So he can be a little bit of trouble, but I think um, I think we're fine right now. I think we're in a good spot. So now that we have an enemy on us, our top priority is to deal with him. Um, his evade value is not high, and he doesn't have hunter. So I think I think the best option with him is to leave him there because we're going to continue exploring. Why waste our shriveling charges? It'll take up minimum two of our charges. Possibly three if we miss the first attack. Might as well just try and evade him. So we do have um, manual dexterity that we can commit to the test. So we'll go ahead and commit that. Putting us at a uh, five versus three. Pretty good odds in this uh, scenario. Um, and that's a cultist. Okay. Equals a minus X, which is the number of locations we do not do on them. That's a minus one. So we evade him successfully. Now we're just going to uh, use our rest remaining actions to explore and get out of there. So we will explore and we pull a treachery. <laughs> and it is ill omen peril. Uh, choose a location when there's at least one investigator. Place one doom. Each investigator at the chosen location takes one horror. So. It's just us. So we get to put another Doom. This location has two Doom now. And we take a Horror. So we are at four Horror already this early into the um, into the uh, thing. So I think um, I don't want to add Doom. So I think I'm going to use up my um, Water Protection on this. So uh, basically we'll take a Horror anyways. But it avoids us taking a Doom. Which saves us a turn basically. Every doom added to the agenda is a turn lost. So, not too worried about the four horror. 
with Carolyn. Uh, we're going to go ahead and explore one more time. We'll pull a card from the exploration deck and see what it does. And it is Deep Dark. Put Deep Dark into play next to the agenda deck. No more than one clue can be discovered from each location by each investigator each round. And this gets discarded at the end of the turn. This is not too bad. I'm not too worried about this at all. Because we're only usually discovering one clue per round. So that's fine. And that ends our turn. So unfortunately, our evasion tactic did not work as well as we expected it to. And we drew pain pills. Okay. I mean, I guess I'll take it. And... We're going to, uh, hmm, what are we going to do this coming around? I guess we're going to have to fight this guy. Or we could use Premonition to um, see if we're going to evade him successfully. We'll see. This is a Serpent's Call. Oh, one of the worst treacheries in this deck. You either get poisoned or you drop the top two cards of the encounter deck. Either choice is terrible. I hate this treachery in this not as bad as Entombed, but it's pretty bad. So, we'll pull two. A tear in time. Test three willpower for each point you fail by. Lose an action or take a horror. Not the worst. Not the worst we could have gotten. Okay, I guess we'll uh, deal with this one and see. Oh, no, three versus three. So, even test. Let it, let's see. Let's actually boost our skill. We'll use Unexpected Courage because we have it. This will boost it by two, so it's going to be a five versus three. And the Chaos Bag says that we get a minus one. Very good. So we succeed. At least we don't lose the two actions. Now our second card that we have to draw, it is another Deep Dark. So it goes again next to the Agenda Deck. The other one um, goes away, so I forgot to put that away, so we'll take that off. All right. Thor, come on. <laughs> Get back, puppy. We're recording here. So, let's see now. How are we going to deal with this guy? We don't have any other cards to commit for an evade test. Attacking him with shriveling, we risk retaliation. And we're using up our very much needed charges from shriveling. Hmm. Although I do have another shriveling in hand, so I could always play another one once I get enough resources. I think... I think uh, to help make our decision... Premonition is really going to come in, in handy here. My best bet is to play Premonition, see what token we're going to pull on the test, and then go from there and decide what I'm going to end up doing. So we'll play Premonition. If it's going to be a positive uh, token or a zero token, then I will evade them and then explore this turn again, because I will find a location that's connected for sure. And a zero, okay. So that's a good sign because we can now evade him without risk. Oh, wait. Actually, he has an evade of three. Oh, God. Okay, so we're not going to be able to evade him with that pull. Well, at least the shriveling won't have a risk of retaliation or um, giving me another horror from a bad pull. So this zero uh, comes in handy for the shriveling. So we'll go ahead and just use it for that. We shrivel him. He takes two damage, and um, we'll just uh, try and uh, take him out now. Darn, that's unfortunate. I, I misread that. I probably wouldn't have played Premonition had I caught that early on, but... Oh, well. Uh, three versus three. All right. I hope I really do <laughs> kill him this time because... Uh, I can't risk pulling another enemy. We'll commit this uh, pain pills for an extra one, so it'll be a four versus three. That at least improves our odds by quite a significant margin. So let's see, zero. Okay, another zero pull. <laughs> really nice, we kill this dude, okay. I hate wasting it on him, but you know, he was becoming a pain in the neck. And just like that, our very nice hand pretty much is depleted. 
All right, now we will proceed with our exploration. So we'll take an exploration card and learn explore action. And nope. Next one, and it is another treachery. Crypt Hill. Test four willpower. If you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. And if you can't, you take two damage. Okay. Well, three versus four. That's a tough check, but there's nothing that I can do about it. And we pulled plus one. Okay, that's a success. I was hoping for an Elder Sign, but plus one, I'll take it. So we succeed. We don't have to get rid of an asset. That would have been disastrous. So we'll shuffle these up and uh, get them ready for our next exploration next turn. Um, but this is our turn right here. So we'll go ahead and end it. We'll draw a card and gain a resource. As there are no enemies in play. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. Second win is good for healing and, you know, I might need it later. <laughs> I just need one more resource so I can play that second shriveling. I'm not feeling confident having only two charges left. And it is Snake Scourge, our encounter card for this turn. Not bad at all. Goes into play in our, in our threat area and our items are blank. A rather mild treachery if I must say so myself. So let's continue exploring. So we'll go ahead and explore. And we pull... Oh, oh god. Entombed. The bane of my existence. You cannot disengage from enemies or move. You gotta test four agility or four combat to break out. Man, oh man. Oh, this is not good. And I cannot counter it with... I used my word of protection. I should not have done that. You know, I said I was going to save it just for this treachery. And I didn't follow my own instinct. Well, we're entombed. Uh, we're going to have to find a way out. And, no. Next one. Next one. Okay, so this one's connected. Burial Pit. Three Shroud, one Clue. And after it goes into play, uh, draw two cards from the top of the encounter deck or place two Doom on it. Holy moly. This this is just <laughs> this is not going too well here. Um, goes into play, but I can't move there because of entomb. So we did explore because it doesn't say we cannot explore. We just can't move once we successfully explore. Can't afford to keep adding doom. So unfortunately, and as bad as this is going to probably be for me, I'm going to have to draw encounter deck cards. There's just, um, the doom adds up so quickly in this scenario, um, it, it could end it early for us big time. So, uh, final mistake, test two agility, plus one difficulty for each doom in your location. If you fail, take two damage. Ah, man, two versus two. Nope, two versus three, sorry. It gets plus one uh, difficulty, and there's a doom in my location, so... Minus three, that's a total failure. So um, we take some damage. We take two damage. And uh, pull the next encounter card. Oh, okay. Well, Ancestral Fear. This one, we have to pick. Place a Doom on the location and discard the card or put in the victory display. Doesn't seem punishing, but it is... Either choice is bad. But... Um, We'll just go ahead and put that into the victory display because I cannot afford to take more doom. It is what it is. Either choice is bad. So for my final action, I think I will just, um, I think I'm going to draw a card. We need him. Oh my god. And there it is. To fight the black wind. It goes right on the agenda. I take a direct horror at the end of the round. If any horror wasn't healed, a doom gets added to the agenda. <laughs> this could there have been a round worse than this one. <laughs> we get entombed, we pull like a bunch of treacheries, and then we pull to fight the black wind. Alright, and it's turn, and we'll draw our card and gain a resource. So, card we draw, 
Okay, take the initiative. Um, that's always handy. Always. Uh, really phenomenal card in solo. I think of the triple question mark icon ones. Uh, Inquiring Mind is better for multiplayer. Take the initiative is better for solo. So the agenda is going to flip because of To Fight the Black Wind. And um, we remove all the doom. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> and let's see what this has to say. The ruins awaken. Just then, a sound thrums in the walls of the temple, a dull humming similar to that of a generator. Grooves in the walls and the ceiling flicker and start to glow. It is as though the temple is alive and it senses your presence. The strange statues and carvings you've seen, coupled with the dim glow and the power cursing through the walls, makes it clear that this temple isn't Aztec in origin. In fact, it appears to be from an even older, more ancient civilization altogether. You feel as though you are an intruder in a world you cannot begin to understand. Confirming your worst fears, a loud hiss and rattling echoes throughout the temple. Whatever you just woke up, it's not happy to see you. Oh boy, and the very, very nasty Harbinger of Velusia has come to play. Oh man, and we only have two shriveling charges. This is going to be tough. It comes out in the location with the most doom, and that happens to be the location we are currently on. All right. The temple warden, the serpent creature, emerges from the shadows with terrifying speed. It is bedecked in gilded feathers and wields a golden spear, the blade tip unravaged by time. The rattle at the end of the creature's tail produces a tremendous noise as the creature hunts you throughout the ruins. And this agenda has a 13 doom threshold, but since there's doom on um, location and play, we have 12 turns to before we lose this. So we'll grab the Harbinger of Velusia and bring him it out. This thing is so amazingly difficult to fight. Three combat, 10 health, three evade, alert hunter, and retaliate. And it can retaliate while exhausted. I mean, you can't win against it no matter what. Two damage, two horror, vengeance of five if you kill it. So even if you manage to beat it, it's going to hurt you <laughs> from the grave. And um, the good thing is in this scenario, when you damage it or evade it, you place a resource on it. So you only have to, in this case, a solo, only have to hit it twice or evade it twice. And it'll go away. It'll disappear in a hiss of smoke. So we only have two shriveling charges, so we have to make them count. That is the goal now so this goes away we're still in tomb so we can't disengage um, we're gonna have to just stand here and fight and take whatever deals us this could be the end of our of our scenario right here <laughs> unless um, unless somehow shriveling uh, Oh man, what are we going to do here? We'll just have to hope for the best and try to shovel them twice. Let's do it. Three versus three. First attack. It, even if, so as soon as that first attack fails, we know we're we're going to lose. So, or we're going to die. So let's see. Zero. Okay. That's a hit. Takes two damage. Solid. And we'll add a resource. All right. Let's make that final one count. Uh, in this case, I think now that I've hit him once and I know I won't, I won't just lose, I can actually afford to use uh, take the initiative to up my chances here. So we'll go ahead and commit, take the initiative to this shriveling test. And um, this will boost us to a decent level here. So it's going to put us at a... Um, Five. Since it's my second action, I only get two wild icons, so that's a five versus a three. And 
Let's see, the chaos bag says that I pulled a zero. Very nice. Two zeros in a row. And this thing is poof in a puff of smoke. All right, thank goodness. Because that is that is definitely one of the most difficult things to fight so far in this game. <laughs> that is such a huge weight off of our shoulders. <laughs> All right. Well, we're not going to be able to get rid of Entombed. Uh, we have one action left, so we'll just draw a card, and, um, okay, a flashlight, I'll take it, and that ends our turn, so we'll go ahead and draw a card, and then gain a resource, alright, finally, we got the Ancient Stone, okay, one of our priorities here, let's see what the, um, encounter deck has in store for us this round. And it looks like it's uh, obscuring fog. Oh, I'm so happy to see this right now. Attached to the location, it gets plus two shot. Not a big deal at all, and there is no, there are no clues there. So now for the grind of trying to get rid of Entombed. It's going to be first attempt two versus four, and this will be an obvious failure. Uh, even if we pull the other sign, that's not going to be good enough to get us to succeed. So. Hmm, actually no, let's do, let's bring out Shriveling, because we're out of charges, and I don't want to take any chances. Unfortunately, it's going to kill another round of trying to get rid of Entombed, because every time you try, the difficulty goes down by one for that round. So, you pretty much need all three actions when you're playing Carolyn, and that's very unfortunate. That's what makes it such a brutal treachery here in this, in this scenario for investigators like Carolyn with low power low combat and low evade it's even on your third attempt it's just an even check which is you know you don't have a high chance of, of succeeding there even with that so you have to commit skill cards or get some kind of a boost to get rid of it it's just so such an annoying treachery <laughs> god and like we're stuck here we can't do anything <laughs> Until we get rid of it. So uh, let's uh, draw a card. Okay, that'll be helpful. Draw another card. Permanition, that definitely helps. I'm drawing cards just to see if I pull something that's going to help me beat this test. So draw a card for the end of the turn. And it's foolishness. Okay. That two wild icons will come in handy, I think. So now what we'll do is draw our encounter card for this round oh <laughs> okay not too bad lost in time shuffle a non-story asset you control into your deck moving all damage and horror from that asset to your investigator so you have to discard three cards if you can't do that we do have an asset in play actually this kind of benefits us more than hurts us our shriveling that's been used up gets shuffled back in the deck so we have a chance of pulling it and getting another use out of it. Sometimes, some treacheries work in your favor. In this case, that seems to be what happened. Very cool. Okay, so now, most important, to see if we're gonna commit foolishness or not. I'm gonna pull premonition just to see what my next token draw will be. If it happens to be a plus one or elder sign, I will commit foolishness to get rid of this entombed very early on so let's see what we pull oh it's an auto fail <laughs> well it's good i didn't commit foolishness so let's now do our attempt and we fail so attempt number two it's going to be two versus a three and i think on our third attempt we're going to commit foolishness so Unless we happen to win this one. Zero. Damn, that would have been nice. Alright, final attempt. Two versus two. And oh, I'm thinking that this will um, will succeed because now it's going to be a four versus two. So, we pull. I mean, we have a chance to fail, but <laughs> we pull a minus two. That's the number needed. Whew. Okay, this goes away. So, I've learned my lesson. Water protection is going only towards Entombed. That's another round wasted. Two rounds wasted on Entombed. 
Okay, cool. I'm, I'm glad I got the Mr. Relay. Um, because that will come in handy as well. Ooh, Curse of Yig. Minus one combat, minus one health. And you can test two willpower. Uh, each vengeance adds a difficulty to it, so... To try and get rid of it. That's, that's annoying, and that can kill Carolyn. Because now, basically, I have three health left. So if I pull another one of those, you know, like that's that's something that you don't think about. It just sits there, but could make a difference between dying and not dying. All right, we're going to bring out the ancient stone because we do need to get this thing identified. This scenario, I'm really hoping to be able to identify the stones early in the campaign that way uh, we can really start benefiting from the upgraded stones moving forward. Okay, we're not investigating this location because it's... It's... Um, Shroud is too high now. Thanks to obscuring fog. So we'll just um, do it from another location. And uh, I'm going to be playing this flashlight... Mostly just as a backup. Uh, you can't combine it with the Ancient Stone. But I do know some locations have very high shroud here. Like a 5. And so the flashlight will come in handy for those. Just to grab the clues off of them. Alright. And so get our card for the round. Okay. Things are starting to move up. I do like having that. Um, physical training. But the, the Doom is moving. It's moving quickly. The last two rounds thanks to Entombed. Oh, look what it is. Our old friend Entombed. <laughs> I'm not making the mistake again. I have a friend just for you right here. You can go ahead and go to the discard along with Ward of Protection. So I'm playing Ward of Protection to cancel the effects of Entombed. I will take a horror, but it is more than well worth it. Uh, now, I could use the I, the uh, stone on the burial pit, but it, it puts up the shroud too high for comfort, and I don't want to take that chance without having a skill card to, to play and succeed. So we're just going to investigate it normally using the flashlight. So um, five versus one. And... That is a cultist token. That's the number of locations with doom on them. So we do get the clue. And we get a resource. And uh, we're going to go ahead and explore. So. It is connected. Cool. So the underground ruins. Two shroud. One clue. Well there's an enemy here. It's uh, considered to be in the victory display. And it's got a vengeance point. So we don't want to get this clue off of here because it will add vengeance. Um, yeah, these locations are in here just in case you absolutely need an extra clue here and there. And their shroud is intentionally lower than the shroud of other locations. That way, in a desperate attempt, you can grab a clue or something off of it. But... Don't want to do it to too many of these because it can really punish you later on. Anyways, I think I do want to uh, identify the stone because the shroud is so much lower here. So that'll put it at a five. So it makes it even five versus five. But is it worth the vengeance point? Hmm. No, let's let's not do that. Um, we'll just draw a card. Yeah. Hmm. Mm, do I? Yeah, five versus two. I need to advance the act, and I'm desperate. <laughs> I know you're going to say, face your crazy. Minus three. We get it. We get the clue, and that's enough to advance the act. I know this is probably going to bite me later on, but I really needed to advance the act so I can get the um, grand chamber in there. Hidden corridors. The ruins are far more vast than even Alejandro had anticipated. 
carvings in the walls and hieroglyphs etched into stone altars suggest the existence of a central chamber underground. Perhaps a hidden passageway will show you the way to this chamber, the very heart of the temple ruins. As you pass the strange glyphs in the walls, the ruins groan and creak in protest, and the carvings glow ominously. Years of decorations have faded the pattern of these glyphs, and the surrounding stones seep with a viscous pus. If only you had some way to restore the glyphs. And this get added to the victory display with vengeance. It adds vengeance point to us. And we'll shuffle the Chamber of Time into the exploration deck. Whatever is inside the central chamber must be very important. Much care was taken to obscure its location. Alright, our new goal is to find the Chamber of Time. Two clues to advance this um, act. And um, yeah, so we get to shuffle this uh, Chamber of Time. We'll put this in the victory display and we'll grab this chamber. Put it into the exploration deck, which has very few cards left in it. <laughs> I guess that's good. Uh, and we will try to find this chamber and recover the relic. So far, uh, we're doing okay with time, with with the agenda. Uh, so we'll go ahead and explore. And it looks like we found the secret passage. So after five shroud and one clue, when you enter, you take one heart and one damage or place one doom. Oh my goodness. Uh, if you have a rope, you can ignore it. I don't have a rope. Um, so we're going to probably not investigate this the shroud is just so high um and we just need to hurry along and grab this uh, chamber of time so um we take a horror and a damage before i forget to do that we'll set those down and and that ends our turn actually so we'll go ahead and draw a card and get our resource our horror is starting to look a little high for comfort and nice no stun on turn that could come in handy although our limited resources uh, prevent us from getting something really good but that's that's okay and we've had another doom to the agenda time wise I think we're doing okay Creeping poison. Uh, we are not poisoned, so this has surge. It whiffs out. Nothing happens. So we'll pull another encounter card, and it looks like it is a Fang of Yig. Prey poison investigator. It does retaliate. Uh oh, it deals a horror and a damage. Oh boy, two hits from this guy, and we're done for. Both horror and damage because we have minus one health. So we have two health left and two horror left. We need to be able to deal with this guy pronto. And I, I don't like that it retaliates. That just makes it a lot more difficult to just try and shrivel him. If he didn't retaliate and our health and damage wasn't so high, then I wouldn't be so concerned. But sometimes you cannot help these things. Hmm. Evading may be a safer option, although our evade value is not very good. <laughs> now I really wish I had played Mist of Relay um, a little sooner. Well, let's see what happens. Three versus three. Shrivel him. And. Hmm. I have nothing. I have nothing that I can that I can use to help in this situation. Um, I don't want to commit the uh, physical training. I may have to, but I, I don't want to. It's two willpower icons. I have to. So uh, it's going to be a five versus three. And if I land the hit, that's that's going to be great. 
Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, oh boy. Okay, this is really bad right now. Really, really bad. We are at one health and one sanity left. Oh man. You know, every time I pull an autofill now, <laughs> I always think, I wish I was Mateo right now. <laughs> I wish I was playing Mateo. Just convert that to a, to a win, to an auto success. Holy moly. Okay, this is not good. I have to attack it twice. I have three charges left. I have to hit him twice, and he does retaliate if I miss. So I can't miss. I think it's too risky. Let's evade him. We're going to commit our Miss Sevillier and uh, No Stone Unturned with its Wild Icon. So we're going to have two Evade Icons, uh, two Agility Icons. I'm not super confident about this, but it will be a um, four versus three for an Evade attempt. At least he can't retaliate on an Evade. So <laughs> it's a minus five. Oh, my goodness. I think we're dead. Um, yeah, because we have one action left, and unless we succeed on this final evade, yeah, yeah, we have to evade him and succeed, otherwise he's going to kill us with both horror and damage. Um, nothing else really, if I attack him, he'll still survive, which means he'll attack us during the enemy phase and kill us, so... We'll go down fighting. I mean, we could try and evade him, but it's a two versus three check. We'll just go down fighting. Three versus three. Shrivel him. Just hurt him a little for killing us. No, no, no. Let's just evade him. <laughs> two versus three. I mean, maybe we'll get lucky. Carolyn seems to have luck on our side all the time. So, um... Minus five, not good enough. We are killed or defeated, knocked unconscious. This guy, uh, <laughs> this Fang of Yig just came out of nowhere. We were doing decently until he popped out. Caught us by surprise. Catastrophic ruin. The ruins groan and shake with anger. You are not wanted here. The walls and ceiling shift erratically, blocking off corridors and attempting to prevent your escape. Grooves in the stone are now glowing vibrant to red hue. A sinister hiss follows you through the temple. The realization dawns on you that you are not making it out of this place alive. The temple shakes with the ferocity of an earthquake, causing you to collapse to the ground. Serpent creatures emerge from the shadows around you, surrounding you completely. The thought... This is how it ends flashes through your mind. For a moment, you contemplate the absurdity of your death. You can only hope that nobody else will be foolish enough to try and explore these forsaken ruins. Suddenly, a distant voice hisses to the others, and the serpents tentatively retreat into the darkness. You run for your life, not taking any chances. The following is scrawled below the previous journal entry. This was a mistake. This was all a terrible mistake. We escaped the temple with our lives, but not a moment too soon. The ruins were alive. It was as though the walls knew of our intrusion, hated us for our presence, wanted us out, wanted us dead. We've gathered outside the temple where Jose is waiting for us. Alejandro, unwilling to return home empty-handed, wants us to go back inside. We must decide what to do next. We've made our decision. Alejandro is right. We've come too far to back down now. Our plan is to regroup and head back into the temple once more. Even from here, we can tell that the layout of the temple has warped and changed. The ruins seem to have reset to the dormant state. With any luck, we'll make it out this time. All right, we're back to do it again. We were defeated. We've decided to take a mental trauma instead of a physical one. Um, we were defeated by both health and sanity. 
So when that happens, you get a choice. You can either get a physical trauma or a mental trauma. So since Carolyn's um, sanity is so much higher than her health, we went ahead and just took a mental trauma. So we are repeating the Doom of Esli. You're supposed to actually repeat it many, many times until you succeed. Uh, it doesn't get easier each time, so it's it's really a tall order, to be honest, it, especially if your investigator is not cut out for this type of scenario, in this case, Carolyn. So, we're going to just give it another shot, and mostly our goal is just to identify that ancient stone um, and try to eke out as much experience points as possible. I, I'm still going to try and win the scenario, but, you know, I don't have my hopes too very high, so... Uh, we will uh, we'll see how that goes. And now that we're all shuffled up, we'll go ahead and draw our opening hand. So let's hope for a good one. Okay, no stone unturned. Man of dexterity, unexpected courage, flashlight, and shriveling. So we definitely want to keep the shriveling. We'll reshuffle everything else, I think. Um, yeah. So we'll reshuffle everything else. We get a guts, pain pills, a machete. Oh, that's going to come in handy. And... Well prepared, well prepared, a very, very handy card to have at all times. So, decent starting hand. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it. I, I would have liked to have seen Marlon Christopher, but since I only have one copy, you know, I, I don't expect him to come out every opening hand. That's totally fine. I'd rather have a way to defend myself than have Marlon Christopher in play. And now that we are all set up with our opening hand, we're ready to begin. So we start at the starting location, which starts with one doom on it because we failed once already. So that doesn't help. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and put out our machete. A very reliable weapon, especially um, for someone like Carolyn, something to fall back on in case I run out of shriveling charges. And I think we're going to play our well-prepared to help us get that extra icon here and there for certain tests. Uh, definitely a handy card. It's kind of like having a free skill card uh, every time, always in your hand. For our final action, we're going to investigate here. It's going to be a four versus a two. And let's see. That's an autofill. <laughs> get him out of the way early. That's our turn. All right, so now we will... Oh, we get Mylon Christopher. Look at that. Not in our opening hand, but we do get him early. I cannot complain. Get a resource, and now we will draw... Oh, get a out of doom. Out of doom, and then we will draw our first encounter card. And it is Curse of Yig already. Yig is not happy with us. He has cursed us. Minus one combat, minus one health, and we get the Serpent Trait. We can get rid of it with a fairly easy willpower test, so... We have to use an action. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, nab this clue. Um, no, let, let's go ahead and get rid of Curse of Yig. So we will use our guts and commit that to the willpower test. It's going to put us at a uh, five versus two. This means that we pull now oh, another auto fail. Uh, well, uh, we're going to do it. Three versus two, just raw. Let's try it. I do not want this lingering on me. A cultist. It's number of locations with doom. That's a one. So we succeed. Curse of Yig is done. But um, pretty much takes most of our turn. Um, hmm. Okay, final action we'll investigate. Four versus two. Oh, okay, starting out kind of bad here. <laughs> and that's a cultist, that's minus one. So we do get the clue. Well, I mean, that redeemed us a little bit, but it's that's our second turn over with already, and we haven't really done much. Okay. And let's put a doom and draw a card. Another curse of Yig. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Okay. Um, well, at this point, I don't think I want to waste more time just getting rid of that. Let's explore. 
So we mm, don't have much to commit to it. Um, let's do this. Three versus two. We'll commit this to make it a four versus two. I just don't like having that on me. Uh, zero. Okay, cool. We get rid of it. I just don't want that to linger on me, and especially when the Harbinger comes out. So let's explore. Uh, so we'll pull a card, and it is Ancient Hall. Three Shroud, two clues. At the end of the round, flip one of the clues to its doom side, and you can spend three resources to prevent this. God, these locations are so annoying in this scenario. Every single one has something bad. It is what it is, I guess, but man, it sometimes can be like really an uphill battle with it. All right, and uh, Carolyn goes and moves into the location, uh, which now has two clues. And um, we're gonna, we have to get the clues as soon as possible, but I believe that was my last action for the turn. And, oh no, we have one action left. We explored, we did the Curse of Yig, then we explored this action three. So four versus three. And that is a skull token. That's the minus one and minus three of there's doom in the location. So we do get the clue. Cool, okay, so now we're starting to pick up a little bit more steam here. Uh, that ends our turn, we'll draw a card. Ancient Stone! Okay. We have to identify this thing. And I think we'll pay the resources to prevent the clue from flipping to the doom side. So, we, we just can't afford to have this doom flip this quickly, so we'll prevent that. Snake Scourge doesn't affect us well it does because the machete well that kind of sucks because i had spent my my money that i was going to use for shriveling on preventing the clue from flipping so at least we don't have any enemies let's get the clue four versus three so it says occultist oh, that's a minus one we get it we get that final clue that's three clues I think the uh, act flips now. Cool. We are moving much faster than last game. Actually, I'm, I have a pretty positive outlook right now on this. But then again, you never know what happens with this scenario. So, no need to go over all this again. It just goes into the Vengeance display and um, Magic and Science. So, we get to shuffle the um, Grand Chamber into the Exploration Deck. Uh... We've already gone over this on the last uh, playthrough of it, so no need to rehash it and waste some time here. So we'll shuffle the central chamber into the exploration deck. And there it is. We'll go ahead and place this. The Harbinger will be coming out uh, two rounds, so... Or it could be even sooner, depending on what happens here. <laughs> so we have two actions left. Uh, let's go ahead and... Um, well, we have no resources. We do have to move quickly. So I think we're just going to explore. So we'll explore. And... Not a matching location. Do it again. Oh. Oh, God. Entombed. We are entombed. And I don't have a way to stop it. Oh my god. Okay. Well, uh, it goes into our threat area. And looks like we are not able to move yet again. Oh god. I see a repeat of last playthrough. This is not good. Well, let's do another card. I mean, we'll have to try to get out of it next round. Okay. This will help when fighting something. But uh, I need something that boosts my agility or combat power. So, okay. Shriveling. And put a Doom. 
and its final mistake. Test two agility. This gets plus one difficulty. For each doom on your location, it gets plus one. If you fail, take two damage. There's no doom, so it's a two versus a two. I don't have any cards really that I can commit to it. So two versus two. Let's do this. If we get hit, whatever. Two is not terrible. Oh, look at that. Plus one. We actually made it. We avoided the little trap. Very cool. This goes away. And we are still entombed. So now it's our turn. I mean, we do have enough combat icons to try and force our way out. It's just really annoying because this is probably going to take up a whole turn at this point. Um... Yeah, let's do it. Two versus four. And that's a plus one. That would have been nice, but we'll do it again. Two versus four. And this time we get zero. <laughs> Final time. Um, we'll use this to tap the um, combat icon from the machete. And we'll commit this. So I guess it's plus two, four versus two. Now our odds are in our favor. Let's give this a shot. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's decent odds. Yeah. So uh, do I commit the other one? At least we have the machete to defend ourselves. Let's just commit the other shriveling just to make sure. So, um, five versus two. And, come on, Chaos Bag, be nice. Oh, well, there's sign. We heal hard, gain a resource, and we succeed. We are no longer entombed. We punch our way out. We hack away with our machete. And we are free. Okay. Whew. So now we'll draw our card and gain a resource for the round. Okay. Holy Rosary would have come in handy, but now that our shrivelings are gone, um, we are going to depend on our machete 100%. I don't know if that's the greatest uh, position to be in, but <laughs> Obscuring Fog, uh, useless here against us, because we already have all the clues we need, so I'm glad I pulled that. One more round, and the Harbinger comes out, so we got to move. Let's explore. Um, not connected. Um, ha! Final mistake. Again, test two agility. Plus one difficulty for each doom. There's no doom, so two versus two. If we fail, we take two damage. I don't think we'll be as lucky as we were last time. Uh, we'll run it. That's all we can do. And it's a skull. That's a minus one, so we fail. We take two damage as a trap just lunges through our chest apparently <laughs> uh we'll explore again and i forgot to reshuffle this so get that in real quick okay and explore and not a connecting location another treachery god this explore mechanic all right ill omen choose a location where there's at least one investigator place one doom and take one horror Okay, well, the location has a doom now, so now skulls are worth minus three here, and um, some other treacheries get additional plus ones to their difficulty because of it. We need to get out of here. Okay, um, what else? What else? We'll explore one last time. Come on, let's at least move once this round. And that is a connecting location. So we make a successful exploration. Oh, there's two under here. Uh, Got to reshuffle this. Grand Chamber. When you investigate Grand Chamber and do not succeed by at least two, instead of getting a clue, it flips to a doom. Uh, so two shroud, one clue. And connect the locations. Bad part is if the Harbinger comes out here, uh, these three are connected basically to each other. 
so he can get to us in one move. Um, that's not a comfortable position to be in. Not much we can do, though. All right, nice. I like Take the Initiative. Such a good card in solo. And our hand is growing, but we don't have that much that we can do yet with it. And let's go ahead and uh, advance the agenda. So we know what's coming now. <laughs> this time we don't have any spells. So this might be more difficult than last time. So I'm not going to read through this again because we've already done it. Doom Threshold of 13. Harbinger comes out and he gets put in a location with the most Doom. There's two locations with one Doom, so we'll just put him in the entryway. And uh, we're going to try and run. And if we have to confront him, hope for the best, I guess. <sighs> Things are getting very, very difficult very quickly here. Having to sp to have spent our two shrivelings. I mean, I had to do it. I had to do it. And I didn't have enough resources really to play two shrivelings. So that, that kind of went into my decision making for that as well. It, it was a tough decision to make. Hopefully I did make the right one. But now it looks like we might be in trouble. Probably going to need as much health as I can get. So I'm going to play second wind to heal. Well, I forgot to do my encounter card. Let's do our encounter card first. So creeping poison. Each investigator who's poisoned takes one damage. We are not poisoned, thank goodness. Surge. So we pull deep dark. Not that punishing. We can only get one clue from each location by each investigator. Uh, one player, it's not terrible at all. So uh, second wind. Uh, we... Play as our first action, we heal two damage because we did pull a treachery. And so we are fully healed now. This will give us a little bit more leeway. Uh, because one failed attack against the Harbinger is death. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's now try and explore. Try to get out of here. Is that nope, not connected. Um not connected. And, ah, uh, another treachery, Crypt Chill. Four will willpower if you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. Great. That is not nice. Well, uh, three versus four. Um, nothing I really want to commit. I, I think I'm just going to run it and hope for the best. Probably not going to happen, but, well, actually, um, hmm, do I commit the Holy Rosary? Don't need it as much as if I still had shrivelings in my deck, but, no, three versus four. Let's just run it and hope for the best. Minus two, of course, I failed, so... Get rid of an asset. It'll have to be well prepared. As much as I like having that card there. At the moment it's not going to be doing anything great for us. Um, I wanted to keep the Holy Rosary for Horror Soak. And in case I get uh, Mist of Rulia. It's really going to help out. So now I really really need to investigate into a connecting location. Otherwise this guy's going to hit us. So come on. Nope. No treacheries, no treacheries, no. Nope. And, yay! <laughs> Burial pit, three shroud, one clue. After, oh, jeez, man, this one again. Another horrendous round. Um, two doom or two cards from the encounter deck or a combination of one of each. Hmm, move there, so at least that bought us a round, um, the Harbinger is not going to hit us this come, this round, so that's good, um, gives us some time to plan, so what do we do here, hmm, I 
can kind of afford the Dune right now because the encounter, the uh, exploration deck's been thinned out. But let's just draw these cards and. Oh my god! <laughs> Serpent Call, you must either put aside a poison weakness or draw the top two cards of the encounter deck. That means three more encounter cards. Um, I, I can't. I can't draw that many encounter cards. The poison is terrible, It's but this just made it where I don't have a choice, really. <sighs> Drawing three encounter cards could definitely kill me this round if I did that. Um, and then Harbinger on our tail. I could be surrounded by three enemies. I'm just thinking about all these things. It just doesn't make sense. Um, poison short-term is going to help me. Long-term is going to hurt me, probably, but... I think short term, if I don't want to lose right now, it's it's what I have to do right now. So I am poisoned. And it doesn't really do anything right now. But there are some in, uh, encounter cards and creatures that do more stuff if you're poisoned. Great. Okay, so that's one. Now second one. Oh, no. Worst time for this. Shuffle a non-story asset you control into your deck. I only have one asset in play. It's the machete. I have no weapons. I have no way to defend myself. This is brutal. <laughs> Man, this thing is just punishing me. Like, really, really punishing me. Oh, man. This is insane. Okay. Um, we'll draw a card, I guess. Uh, second wind. Yeah, that could help, I guess, if we find a way to survive this guy. Ends our turn. He moves. And we will draw our card and gain a resource. Please be something good. Ooh, dynamite blast. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I don't have the resources to play it, but almost. It won't kill the Harbinger, but it could come in handy. Let's just hope we don't get a creature. And a final mistake yet again. Test 2. Agility. Plus 1 difficulty for each Doom. There is no Doom. 2 versus 2. And... We pull... Hey, 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 look at that. Elder Sign. We heal one and we get a resource. Hey, we do have enough to play Dynamite after all. It's not going to stop the Harbinger, but it would be funny somehow. Anyways, I think it's more important to bring out um, Mylon Christopher. So we'll bring him out and he will give us a plus one to intellect and also give us a damage and two horror soak. And he's going to help us investigate this place. Five versus three. Let's do this. And we get a zero. Hey, hey, we get the clue. Very cool. We get a resource. And let's keep exploring. Trying to get out of here. Get away from this thing. Uh, not connected. Ah, oh, this is hard to grab here. Uh, okay. And that is connected. So, secret passage. Five shot, one clue, victory one. After you enter secret passage, take one horror and one damage, or place one doom. These locations, man, every single one has something bad when you get to it, or when you explore it. It's it's not quite as bad as Boundary Beyond, and at least exploring isn't as taxing on you as in Boundary Beyond, but this is almost there. And we move in, buying us yet another round, and we don't want to grab this clue, because um, it's a shot of five so it's too high um we take damage and a horror and uh that ends our turn bought us another turn and we need to find a card to help us fight this guy or girl or thing <laughs> uh please be something good and border protection helps okay that's nice um and let's put our Doom on the agenda. 
please be something good, and it's an enemy. Oh, I was fearing that was going to happen. So we get a Brood of Yeg on us, and now we are stuck fighting um, with nothing to fight with. Oh, wait, I have... Um, I have the uh, anatomical diagrams. Oh, thank goodness for this card. They're not elite, so I could use this. And I do have five or more remaining sanity. So, he's got minus two fight, minus two evade. I'm not going to be able to kill him because he has three health. But we'll evade him and move out of here. Um, this puts us at an evade value of two versus one, I think. Um... Mm. Mm. Then I could just like move to or explore and move to the chamber. I think um, evading is the best course of action here. So let's do that. And then I think we're going to explore after so we can move out of the way. Uh, two versus zero. So, it's uh, Cultist, number of locations with Doom, so that's a minus two, but that's still good enough. Only the autofail could have failed us in that test. And we're going to get out of here, explore. And it is a Chamber of Time, four Shroud, two Clues, set aside the Relic of Ages and put it, and put a Doom on the... <laughs> Even this one has something bad. So... There it is, and it has a doom. So we made it to the Chamber of Time. Um, this is great. Um, now we just got to nab the two clues. We're, we really only need one to advance the agenda, or the act. So um, this is the Relic of Ages. It is a two-cost asset with three wild icons. It doesn't really do anything. And this is our doom. Hmm. I think if we move the agenda, the locations get rearranged. So that might be a way for me to buy myself some more time against these creatures. I think strategically that might be the best course of action. Spend a resource and we'll play the stone. Ancient stone plus three shroud for the location. Putting it at a seven. If we were to do it here. I think we're going to do it on our way out. Because this one, 7 is a little too high for us right now. Um, darn it, man. I should have played that stone earlier. Because I could have done it on a 2-shroud location or something. But oh well. Um, now our mission is... Oh, cool. Oh, this is so handy. Okay. Um, we can get out of this alive. Uh, once we grab one more clue, we can rearrange the locations and move these enemies back, buying us some time. We actually can still make this. So, um, all hope is not quite lost yet. Uh, so we get deep, dark, good, not a creature. Very good. If we got a creature, we'd be done for. But deep, dark. So we can't get two clues out of here this round. Whatever, no big deal. We only need one to advance. So let's go ahead and investigate. It's going to have to be. Um, yeah, yeah. Can't use the stone. Now, should I play physical training? Waste an action doing that, but it might be worth it to have that in play just in case I need a boost. Um, yeah, I think, I think the pros outweigh the cons here. Let's go ahead and play physical training. And we will place that into our asset area. It may come in handy in just a moment. Uh, we'll see. And we still have some good cards in our hand. So let's investigate five versus four. And the bag 
says minus one. So we get it. We get our clue. Agenda advances or act advances. Boom. Very cool. So now we get to move these enemies away from us um, because these get rearranged. So let's go ahead and read this because we didn't get this far last time. And it's the relic. The relic hums with power and throbs in your hands. Energy from the device seeps into the corridors of the ruins and the structure of the temple shifts. So each location shifts into a straight line uh, with the chamber of time on the left, entryway on the right. And from left to right, it's going to be in order of how much doom is on them from lowest to highest. So um, what goes in between is our choice, so that's good. Definitely helps us out. The ruins are shuddering with a tremendous power. You fear that the structure may collapse if this keeps up. You have to escape with the relic. Okay, this act may just have won us the game. I mean, I can't cheer victory yet. But, buying us a little bit more time. Um, so we take control of the relic, which doesn't do anything. And... Um, uh, let's see where we're going to put these guys. So, lowest to highest. So, the entryway goes on the right. Even though the Chamber of Time has Doom on it, it still goes on the left most location. <coughs> so, we'll shift this. There we go. few locations away from us so basically this becomes a mad dash to the entryway all we have to do is make it to the entrance i do want to identify that stone i can do it at the entryway right before i resign that's um that's absolutely doable two that uh, definitely is going to be the way to go i think So that we can actually uh, get some kind of cards to avoid them and get on out of here. Let me get these out of the way here. I guess we're, we know they're connected straight in the line. No, not a big deal. Um, we have a few rounds. We have plenty of Doom left. So time is not of the essence. Surviving is. Evade the Harbinger, and I think if we run past, make it to the entryway. It's really our final uh, objective here, and then we can resign, no problem, and we win. We are so close to victory. I've never won with Carolyn on this scenario. Um, but that big roadblock of that, that cluster of creatures there is going to probably present itself to be a bit of a problem although we have hopefully we get something good like a you know weapon or a spell or something miss aurelia would be perfect right now all right let me phase they move over they're one away from us um we just have to be able to get this clue out of here and for a victory we do get something um okay let's um get our resource and nothing bad hopefully and oh fang of yig it's the thing that killed us last time <laughs> please don't tell me this is what's gonna kill us this time so fang of yig Let's see. Because uh, then if we if we evade them, we may be able to try for the clue once. If we pick it up, great. We get the victory point. If not, then we can still move back to the chamber and let those enemies move in that round. So they'll all be in one place. Dynamite blast them. 
So then we only have the Harbinger to deal with. We can then evade the Harbinger and make a run for it to the entrance, identifying the stone, and then resigning for victory. You know, getting another enemy could screw us over or... But uh, sounds like a solid plan. And this is our path to victory if we are successful. So let's go ahead and try and evade him. And uh, we'll use Premonition to see if we need to commit any cards to this. Uh, and Premonition lets us pull a card uh, and basically uh, reveal it. And for our next... Token. And it's a minus three. All right, so that uh, kind of throws a little wrench in our little plan here. So minus three, even if we commit, take the... It's not going to be good enough uh, for a success to evade this guy. Unless we commit... What we're going to end up doing here. Commit water protections to get a plus four. That'll ensure our success in that evasion attempt so um he is evaded um now should we try to grab that clue first and then move identify the stone uh by grabbing the clue so we get the clue or this is a very fortunate turn of events. We're going to move back and um, end their turn. He goes, and then they move in, and now we can Dynamite Blast them. We might actually win this. Um, unfortunate for us, uh, it came out now. So let's, uh, this goes away. Oh, man. Oh, this, now we just got to find a way to deal with the Harbinger. Um Got enough resources, got our stone identified, a tear in time, test three willpower for each point you fail by, you must lose one action or take a horror. We have to succeed this one. Uh, it's very important, we need all of our actions. And we haven't... ...the situation, so... We'll commit this, but if we do take horror, it's not a huge deal. So it's a, f a five versus three. Uh, pretty good odds. And if... Nice. Although I was prepared to take the... Means this goes away. And... We don't take anything. Now for the grand finale. A dynamite blast to these guys. And bring out the dynamite blast, which deals three damage to each enemy and each investigator at that location. We are not there, so only the enemies will be taking the three damage. And they are about to. So I just restarted my camera, guys. I'm sorry. I'm testing the motion here. It was cutting uh, out. Repeatedly, I apologize. Um, anyways, I dynamite blast these guys. I don't know how long that was going for. I hope that it didn't ruin the whole video, but um, all right, these guys go away. Harbinger takes three damage, and um, cool. So now, um, now we just have to get past this guy. Uh, and we used our uh, take the initiative, so we no longer have that bonus to our evade value. Well, let's go for that victory point. So five versus four. I mean, the, even if this thing kills us, we've done three damage to it. And, oh, no. Oh, man. Do it again. Five versus four. Five versus four. Five versus four. And... Skull, um, minus, oh, that's a minus three because there's doom on the location. That ends our turn. Harbinger moves in and, um, 
He is engaged with us, and he will be attacking us for two damage and two horror. If we are not able to um, evade him, uh, two failed attempts equals death. So uh, we need to, we can only fail once. Uh, and now it's too late for us to try and get that last victory point out of the chamber. Or actually, it's worth two victory points, unfortunately. Ooh, premonition could help. Okay. Premonition can certainly help us. Um, this is, well, maybe not really. Because <laughs> either way, we got to use do something that's going to hurt us. Uh, we just pulled the tear in time again. Test three willpower. Um... We can afford the horrors of three versus three, and let's uh, zero. Okay, so we succeed. We don't take any horror, and let's now play Premonition and see what our fate is. Let's see what our fate is. I mean, no matter what, I think if we fail, it's a minus three. Oh, man. Um, there's not really anything we can do about that. That's going to be a failure, and that means it's going to attack us. Um, so that's the only failure we were allowed to have. We have to succeed in this next test, or we're dead. But even if we're defeated, uh, to be honest, I, it would have been nice to get the two victory points out of the Chamber of Time. But we're not going to be able to get that even if we win. If we are defeated, at least we were able to identify the stone. Sure, it was at a cost of some trauma, but <laughs> uh, it was necessary. So we try to evade him, and that is a failure. Um, which means he hits us. Yep. Get Dr. Christopher. He takes a hit for me. So he'll take uh, one damage and the two horror. Well, we have physical training, so let's spend our resources to boost our combat. One round, so it's plus two, so uh, four versus three. Um, please. And... Cultist, number of locations with Doom, that's a minus three, that's a failure. <sighs> well, he hits us again, and that is enough to kill us. Uh, boy. Well, we had a feeling it could happen. Uh, it was a valiant effort. I think, overall, Carolyn did pretty well. Uh, we get one. Mm. Uh, so we get two. Two victory points. Um, yeah. Two victory points. Wow. That's pretty terrible. Oh, man. All that work for two victory points. Although, <clears throat> having identified the stone, I'm actually quite happy about that. We've made our decision. There was no way we were going back to that death trap. Thankfully, there was another way. Jose had brought some TNT from the trucks, and there was more than enough to level the damn place. That night, we put on a hell of a fireworks show. The jungle protested. Birds scattered into the sky. The ground rumbled, and hateful snarls surrounded our camp. But the dynamite did its job. <sighs> Once the dust settled, we began sifting through the debris in search of anything with historical or cultural significance we could bring back to Arkham. Jose was the first to notice the blue light peeking out from underneath the remains of the temple. The rays grew in intensity with each passing moment. As we started clearing the rubble in order to discover the source of the light, there was a sudden flash, and the debris at the center of the ruin scattered. A steel orb of unknown origin lay on top of the rubble, gently humming. It was attached delicately to a bronze frame, appearing almost religious in its significance. The blue glow emanating from the device dimmed as I touched it. There was no way a device like this was built by the Aztecs.
With the artifact in tow, we left the smoldering temple behind us. We had outstayed our welcome in its rainforest, and we knew it. Around us, the jungle hissed. The ground slithered and crawled with snakes. In the darkness, we heard shouts in a language we could not understand. There was no time to back up camp. We ran as soon as we had the chance. Andrea was struck in her throat by a black feathered arrow. Her startled scream captured in grim perpetuity. Jose was grabbed by a giant boa as we fled north into the river canyon. His neck snapped before we could reach him. Maria was waiting for us with the trucks when we finally reached the northern edge of the jungle. We didn't stop until we crossed into Mexico City. Even now I do not feel safe. Who could, after seeing what we have seen? To hell with Diazli, and to hell with this forsaken place. That went well. <laughs> well, Carolyn... Maybe we'll want to go in a third time into her favorite ride, the Doom of Esli. We'll catch up with her next time. Until then, have a good night.